after 11 days of waiting approximately from when they bloomed last year, maybe 15 days actually compared, they finally came out yesterday and this is the first tree that has them. Check it out, Tokyo's Sakura cherry blossom season has officially begun everybody on the weekend and on a beautiful sunny day there you can see that's also a Somi Yoshino Sakura tree beyond this one not a lot of people here yet not a lot of blossoms out here yet but it's still early how you doing everybody welcome to Tokyo it is a wonderful warm afternoon Sunday you know I, I after the, the couple of weeks that we've had here, I didn't expect that it would be this nice. It was just because it, it, the last two weeks have been like winter, really. And I can understand why the cherry blossoms were delayed for as long as it is. You know, the most interesting thing to me about this whole delay was the, the, the uh, post that I saw from uh, National Geographic. It said, this year's cherry blossoms were a warning sign. And they talk about a story that is uh, the cherry blossoms are, are the, the earliest ever because of global warming. And I thought that that was pretty disingenuous and completely false. Like, I, I, the editors didn't even do any research because they, they made the story sound like in the past tense that the cherry blossoms are already finished in Kyoto. They haven't even started yet. In fact, yesterday was the first day. So this, it, it was a weird post that came out at a weird time. But again, if you take a look at the trees here, most of the cherry blossoms are still in bud form. Check it out here. You can see there are just some pink buds, some blue, uh, green and, and pink buds. Really beautiful with that sky today. In fact, it's not going to be for an, another four or five days until we really see this thing and I'll bring you back to this park it's going to be an amazing sight this is such a unique place because we're at a corner this is an island that's in Tokyo it's a man-made island uh, part of uh, actually this part it was originally in the uh, Tokyo Bay but most of the rest of this island was filled in uh, back in the Edo period to make an island that was the first island that was man-made over there called Shinkawa across the Sumida River and now we have this, uh, I, th I think it's like 21 bridges or something that go along the Sumida River. We just saw Spaceboat go by here before I started the live stream, which is a shame because I'd love to have shown you Spaceboat a little more. Let's walk around uh, this area and see if we could find some more cherry blossoms along the Sumida River on a beautiful day here in Tokyo. You can see there are some people that are out and about doing what we call hanami, which is cherry blossom viewing. It is still early in the morning here, but there's some picnickers out. Even though there aren't a lot of blossoms yet, but you know, the day is just so warm and you don't get so many of these in the spring where the wind is normal. Oh, look at them, they got like a, a massive, look at that, he's got like chairs, a blue sheet, they have a table. The, probably the patriarch of the family is holding down the fort or the oldest member, maybe who's retired, to make sure that they have a place because uh, it's gonna get a little crowded. You'll see this at Japanese parks all over, in particular this year, because the last few we've had, you know, the, uh, that, when no one was coming to Japan. And now we got a ton of people. So this is gonna be a little bit too early, but they're here. Like I'm looking at the trees and there's not a blossom on the ones on this side, maybe because it's a little bit cooler in the shade. I don't, I'm not sure. But that's the thing that you all need to remember this. If, if, if there's, this is the most important thing I'm going to say in this entire live stream. Never plan your trip around anything that has to do with Mother Nature, in, including the cherry blossoms. The season is not set for tourists. It's not set for Japanese residents either. It's set by Mother Nature and it is so unpredictable uh, year by year and we're going back it's not a global warming thing per se. It's something that's always happened where the cherry blossoms were early, 15 days earlier than normal. Yeah, perhaps I could see that the, why the National Geographic would have queued this story up thinking that they'd be early again. But this year, they're like 11 days later than normal, which is odd. It's odd. And those are so many Yoshino trees right there. The white cherry blossoms and... Let's go see if there's a, a blossom on there. 
I was here just a couple of weeks ago when the, they were supposed to bloom and they weren't. So I was a little, I was pretty upset because, but actually, you know what? Now that I've gotten a chance, I released a video uh, a, a couple of nights ago. I don't think, you, I don't know if you've seen it yet. If you have, do check it out. It's about uh, a food tour in Shinjuku. I know a lot of you all come here to, to Japan quite intimidated because of being, you know, the Japanese food is something that you might not know about. Uh, you can't speak Japanese. The tours are, was a good option. And I got a chance to work with a, a tour company a uh, magical trip to see what their tour was like and even a local living here for 26 years I learned a lot and you always have to have an open mind you, you never know everything and I was glad to have that opportunity you're gonna see what I learned which was a lot from a, a guy who was born he was he was born when I came to Japan I think he was like around 26 years old too so <laughs> that made me feel a little old oh look at down there on the river we're starting to see um, it's still kind of early. I think it's just a little bit after 11, 11 a.m., but definitely in about an hour or so, we're gonna see a lot of people. Today, uh, Leo is with Grandpa and, and Kanai is at work. So uh, I kind of get the day off because uh, Leo and I spent the entire day yesterday hanging out, which is a lot of fun. Like I took, I took Leo to go see the robot there. There you go, that was, that was a lot of fun. So we had a good a good day yesterday. Wow. So you can see they're just buds here. We're, but this isn't a promising sign because if you look at the live stream I did a couple of weeks ago at this exact same spot, it would just look like, like, like dark bark. That was it. And now we've got these uh, beautiful buds here. You know what? I actually kind of like, like this stage because the expectation sometimes is so much more exciting than the actual events. Because once the cherry blossoms, and this is how you know you've lived in Japan for a long time. I lived here, I've lived here, this is my 26th year, I believe, 98, Heisei Junen, Prime Minister was Hashimoto, then Obuchi, so it goes back quite a ways. I think it was like 26 Prime Ministers. But um, this, this, the saddest thing for me is when it hits full bloom, because I know that it's over. So already I'm thinking about the end of the cherry blossoms just as, the, as they've begun so it seems like this is the most most uh, exciting time for me because I'm anticipating it and that's super exciting to me all right you see it right there there's like two so these people are not out here for nothing I see two popcorn looking blossoms let's zoom in there you go two blossoms on this one tree so we've got a long way to go. Happy Easter, Daniel. Thank you for reminding me. We don't really celebrate Easter here, so we don't see the marketing and we don't, we don't uh, have it marked on Japanese calendars. But to everybody out there, happy Easter. It's a wonderful weekend, a wonderful Easter Sunday to you. And you're celebrating it with blossoms, and that doesn't happen too often. Although Easter does rotate, uh, move around from year to year. It's pretty with the color of the, of the river. The Sumida River has actually cleaned up over the years too. It used to be really dark. It's still kind of dark, um, very polluted in the 1980s, the 70s and the 80s. Uh, Kanai's father told me um, that the Sumida River used to smell really bad in the 1980s and, and the odor would be very powerful uh, through the city because of all the pollutants and how dirty it was. And it's, it's a huge change. Tokyo was an extremely polluted city back in the day. Oh, there's, there's a couple of buds right there on the end of the branch. That's really pretty. It's, it's hard to, rem uh, old timers might know this, but, and I, I, this is before my time, but there were, there were times like down by Kawasaki, the, ta the Tamagawa River, very polluted. The city was just a nasty place. I remember seeing in a, um, funny enough, National Geographic magazine where they were back in the uh, 80s, I think it was in third grade, and they showed what does Tokyo look like. I was fascinated with the globe and, and the world when I was in third grade. I used to hang out feeling the uh, topography of the Himalayas and stuff and going, wow, this is so cool. I remember reading the, uh, 
um, National Geographic and seeing the traffic cops with masks and all the pollution around them standing in the middle of the streets here in Tokyo. Now we've got traffic lights and now we've got uh, a, clean a much cleaner environment, which is probably the result of a lot of the factories going over to China. Um, and now we get the pollution that comes over from China every now and then we complain, but it wasn't too long ago that Japan was at the center of, of that pollution nastiness, which we don't have uh, too often anymore. You know how I know it, that nasty stuff's coming from China? Because during those years, the last few years, when the factories were shut down over there, the air was much cleaner <laughs> over here, although we weren't allowed to go out so often. We had states of emergency and whatnot, but we still were able to uh, um, like see the impact of factories being shut down in, in China, which is really interesting over here. The yellow sand Charles, is, you're absolutely right, it depends on the year. That's interesting you brought that up. It depends on the year. We haven't had too many of them yet. It could be pollen, but we also have a yellow sand problem that comes from the Gobi Desert. The last year that was really bad, I think, was 2004 was the worst. You had yellow sand coating everything. And it was uh, in the sky. We, I don't know, the internet wasn't as big in 2004 as it is now, but I wonder if there's, we didn't have social media, but there might be some images if you search back. I think it was 2004, 2005. I can't quite remember, but I think it was 2005. There was the worst Gobi Desert. The winds are really strong and it blew so much stuff here. And the news was filled of these uh, th uh, theories that there could be like uh, diseases and stuff in the sand that's out there in the desert. And, you know, attached to the particles, bacteria or something. I, that, stuff that we learned on the TV back then, more rooted in fear than anything else. Although today, you never know beautiful thing that they've done with the flowers here. I was in Odaiba yesterday, as I showed you with Leo, and we saw tulips right around Divers uh, Center. It looks like uh, a little slice of Holland over there. It's worth going over to Odaiba, check out the tulips next to that uh, unicorn gondom over, over there on the other side. Pretty, huh? Yeah, it's, it's, it's funny. They've also posted an updated version. Folks, I, I want you to also understand this. As, as I told you, the most important thing is that Mother Nature does not work with your schedule. Um, also, the, the Japanese Meteorological uh, Service, JMS or JMA Association, I'm not sure what it is in, in English, but they, uh, they'll do these maps in like many, many varieties, versions, all right? This is like, I think it was a... 11th version so they start doing these maps like at the end of February and of course they can't predict what the weather's going to be like for the next two months so they had to do their very best to predict which is not a science it's maybe based a little bit on it but it's mostly on trends of like last year or this year and whatnot and everybody thought that we were going to be early this year because it was a fairly mild winter but you know it didn't end up being like that at all because um, yeah now we have the cherry blossoms in Tokyo from March 29th, it says here. This is the latest one the, from the wet weather map. Uh, Sendai, April 1st, April Fool's Day. So that's going to be tomorrow in Sendai. How cool is that? Uh, I think that Tokyo, that's the start of it. You're not going to get full blossom until maybe April 5th, I think. April 6th. So we got some time. Lucky for those that came a little bit later this year who got their tickets months in advance trying to prepare for this. Uh, we're going to see Aomori going to be uh, around April 15th. So you're going to see the peak around April 23rd, 24th, which is not too far off of schedule. But for the western part of to Japan, and Japan is more east-west than it is north and south. That's another thing I think you can take away from this live stream. We say East Japan and uh, West Japan, not North and South Japan so much. Although Tohoku starts to go north and Hokkaido is north. There's East and West Japan, so Osaka is West Japan, uh, everything like Kyoto and Osaka, and everything from, I, I guess, maybe uh, Central Japan is Nagoya, and then East Japan is everything there on from Tokyo. So that's sort of how we split it up here in Japan. But I would say like Kyoto's East, or sorry, Kyoto's West, and then everything from over there is East. I, I consider Nagoya East Japan. That's just my own personal. Thing. And uh, you can see down there in, in uh, Shikoku, Kochi started a few days earlier. So the first places this year were in Miyazaki and Kochi. And then uh, and a little bit down there in Hiroshima, do you see? Miyajima probably blooming because it's an island and a little bit warmer. Uh, but now we've got it in Tokyo finally.
and that's the updated schedule. And you know, it's uh, it's funny. It, you have um, uh, all of the media here now um, talking about how the cherry blossoms started late this year. Uh, according to this one here, they bloomed on the 29th, which is the Yasukuni tree. That's five days later than usual, but 15 days later than last year. Some people are saying 11 days later because of the schedule from the last couple of years. So who really knows when the, the normal time for the blossoms are? We just know that it was late, all right? So I'm saying I'm cutting it in the middle. Oh, look at that. We got these wave runners over there. Lighten up the Samita River with, look at this, is that the, the sensei? That's a lot of them. Is this some sort of event? Is this a race? Oh, there's a double. That's a massive one. That's like a Harley wave runner. I don't know if you can hear that. It's sort of like a, a um, low rumble. Hold these speedboats, Batman. <laughs> Damn it. <laughs> right. <laughs> some sort of quote unquote operation going on here. I wonder what they're going underneath Eitai Bashi, Eitai Bridge over there, one of my, my favorites, lit up with these blue LED lights now. Wave Runner Club meeting writes in here, Emil, thank you. The posse's out. Let's see in this first tree here. You know, Leo was born in Chuo Ward, and you'll find his name. They plant, which is kind of nice. This is Chuo Ward is one of the 23 wards in central Tokyo, and they plant a, a cherry blossom tree for all the kids that are born here. It's getting less and less every year. That's pretty. It's kind of out of the sun now. That's not a Somei Yoshino. There's different varieties of cherry blossoms. So that's, I think, maybe Another thing that you need to keep in mind, if you do come here early, like in February, you're still gonna be able to catch cherry blossoms. The, uh, the, the, Kawana, the uh, Kawazu ver variety of Sakura is out, in particular in Shizuoka, where they're famous from. So you can go and see that from around the middle of February to the middle of March. They were out, very beautiful. Aloha Michael Sasano, welcome. You, you come at a beautiful time. I love this point. It's such a nice, uh, nice view of the city here. You can buy a bento. Today is the Brazilian Churrascos food truck. I, I walk by them again. I'm like, hey, there you guys are again. Last time I saw you was with uh, uh, my friend Dean as we walked from Ginza to Akihabara about three weeks ago. And they're over in this area now too. So you can get a, a, a Brazilian Churrascos bento. Come here, sit right along the river, watch the boats go by on a very warm day where I have shorts on maybe the third or fourth time, although I, I do wear shorts in the winter anyways. You can't really stop me. I'm not one for 100% for pure on Japanese etiquette. There are rules. I break them all the time, but it's good to know the rules. That's when you should break them. Don't, don't break the rules unless you first learn the rules. That came from... Uh, so I, I, one of the reasons why I have a lot of really good connections in Japan and in particular Tokyo is because I used to teach at a, an English language school in central Tokyo in Ginza and my my lessons were quite popular because the CEO of the company would take my own would take my lessons and he would recommend my lessons to other CEOs who would then um, I would get to network with and I'm still in touch with several of them today and one of them was a marketing executive at one of the big advertising companies here in Japan massive and he told me look it, breaking the rules is important, especially for what he did. But the first thing you need to do when you're young and you work in an ad agency is to learn the rules. You must learn the rules and, and learn to live by the rules. And then one day your uh, uh, senpai is going to say, now let's start to break the rules because that's when you start to make an impact in marketing here. But you need to know the rules in order to, to know how to break them. Because if you break them without knowing them, you're going to offend people. And that's something that you didn't want to do in the advertising business. So. I always, that, that's a piece of advice I got from a, you know, a CEO of a, of a, I don't think he's a CEO anymore, I think he's, he's left, but massive advertising company. Um, yeah, he's gotta be gone now. That was like 16 years ago or something. 
beautiful. And if you're lucky enough, every 30 minutes or so, you're gonna catch the space boat making its way. One of my favorite uh, sights to see these uh, three ships that were created, um, I don't know, like 20 years ago. And they go back and forth on the Sumida River, shuttling passengers from Asakusa, or Asakusa, which is the, the cultural heart of Tokyo, to Odaiba, which is the beach of Tokyo, which you could go swimming, but I wouldn't recommend it. Aike, it is here. Thanks for showing us a sort of the Trade Blast of Seasons. You're very welcome. Thank you for joining. All right, let's go take a look at the, of the, the tree that the tree that did it all for me this year. I was walking with, uh, at, at, in the evening, kind of I came back from work and, and Leo and I were, uh, and the three of us were walking uh, around this area. And uh, like, we love the river here. I think this is one of the best places to live in, um, in Tokyo. I, w I don't think I would like living in Shinjuku because it's just, um, I don't know, you're away from the sea, the air quality isn't as good over there. It's too crowded, it's a little bit, and there's a lot of students, which is good, but I don't think it's for me. If you want to live here and you have kids, you probably want to be down by the river where the air, air quality is a little bit better. Um, and it's not as crowded down here. It's not because it's more expensive. I think it's just there's less, account, there's less places to live, perhaps. I don't know. It's hard to, it's hard to really say. But uh, yeah, I moved here from Edogawa Ward about six years ago. And I've, I've really enjoyed living in Chuo Ward because I can ride my bike to Tokyo Station and Haneda Airport, so I could actually ride my bike to the airport. That's pretty crazy. So the first blossoms that I saw were over here. Hold on. It was this tree. And you see, they put the, the uh, every year they plant one of these trees, sakura trees on the river. And uh, this one's from Reiwa 2. So this is, what was this, uh, about four years ago, five years ago. And there were 2000, 2,080 kids born in Chiu Award. And the ones that allowed them to write their name are here. And Leo's got his name written on one of these for three years ago, which is very cool. Oh, this is the tree right here. The signal wasn't so good though. Hopefully it, uh... it's a little bit better, but you can see just uh, little pieces of popcorn on there. It looks like popcorn on the Soma Yoshino tree, some green buds, which is a, a beautiful sign. Life started to spring out about 10 days ago. So I, about a week ago, actually, I started to see the green and then in the last few days with the warmer weather that turned, really starting to come out and it's exciting for me. The anticipation, as I said, is even better than the actual event because I've seen too many cherry blossom seasons here, but with the blue skies, it really is a stunning sight uh, to go around central Tokyo. But uh, like I, I have to be honest with all of you, for, for uh, those that are coming to Japan, Tokyo is maybe the worst place to go because you don't, there's too many people and you don't really get that feeling that I think you should get with the cherry blossoms. You, you should feel a connection with nature, I think. I, that's just me, my own personal preferences, but uh, everybody's going to have a little bit of what they take away from something like this. And for me, it's, it's a, that connection with nature. I like to have, it's nice and quiet. You hear the birds chirping, there's a warm breeze. Um, you're just with your, your family, you know, yeah, I, that's something that's really special. I think at this time of year, you slow down and I can afford to do that because I just got two videos out. <laughs> if you haven't seen the other one, please do check this one out. This story, it's, it doesn't seem like it's going to wow you, but this is really good. Um, and if you are watching the TV drama Shogun, you're really going to appreciate the history in this one with William Perry finally opening up the country and this man Manjiro a very pivotal person um, and when I heard this story I, that's why I spent a year to make it it was just it inspired me and that's what uh, you know creators are supposed to come up with something and inspire you with it so this is the first tree right here with the, the it, more have come up this is the first bunch of blossoms that I saw yesterday and I put it on Instagram like hey welcome blossoms you you're late Better late than never. And the same can be said of our, our friend WRX Turbo, who is in the house. Welcome. Nice to see you again. 
around the moat at Osaka Castle, Kyoto Botanical Gardens is really nice. Thank you, Aiken. Yeah, there's so many beautiful spots. There are places in the city that you can go and enjoy a tree, but they're, they're, the places where you have a thousand trees all in one spot are the places that are going to be insanely crowded and I think you're gonna have stress and that's the op opposite of what you should be experiencing when you come to see the cherry blossoms. This is supposed to be anti-stress. If that's you know, possible with a lot of people. But, oh, that's a nice one here. Jvlog writes in, good morning, welcome. All the cemeteries are a good place to experience. And yeah, Aoyama Cemetery is really, really beautiful. Uh, Zoshigaya, where I, I see Manjiro's resting spot from that video, is also really nice. Ross saw, saw the Manjiro story. Thank you. I, that's, listen, that's going to go down as maybe one of my, um, my best life work, I think. Even though it's not going to get a lot of views at the moment, it's just going to take a little time to grow, just like the blossoms, but zero regrets. And uh, this one, if you haven't seen it yet, this all right in your face. Yeah, I, I kind of cleaned up my face too much. I ran it through the through uh, the the topaz uh, photo filter maybe one too many times. <laughs> maybe I'll roll that back. Maybe I'll roll, roll that back. But it is not an AI generated image. Okay, that's really me. I, I think some of the creators really clean up their wrinkles too. It's a thumbnail. I mean, you're supposed to touch it up a little. Nah. It's all good. I think, I think they, that cringy photo might attract people to come here to, to come and watch it. So it was it came it came out really popular. So hey, actually the video I'm a little bit afraid to say the video I I, I misspelled uh, Shinjuku. I, I I wrote it Shunjuku, and I didn't I, I put the title was the last thing I did and I did it at two in the morning, and then I got an email I got a uh, message from Greg. Uh, my friend from life where I'm from and he wrote to me uh, John let me see if I have it because it's funny he goes John it's it's you you accidentally wrote Shinjuku and I said oh crud and I went back in there and I fixed it I can't find it. I think I, I might have deleted it but that was fu that was funny I, t I even took a screenshot of it I'm like Greg how did I miss that I hear it is Greg's like Shunjuku and I'm like yeah oh, crap <laughs> it's good to have friends watching your video and I didn't have to go to wait too much longer because all the comments were coming in about it as well so it's not Shinjuku this one's got looks like a, a mint leaves doesn't it it's a really pretty tree no blossoms on it but you, you're starting to see that that vibrant green color I love that with spring Right? There's like a couple of days where you get this vibrant, fresh green color before the leaves start to mature and turn a darker green. We're, we're just entering that season right now. You see the boats coming in here. I'm going for a ride. This is going to be all, this is, would be something of a, a cherry blossom tunnel. And it's going to be like that in a couple of days, in, in a week. Because I don't see a blossom on any, I just one. But it's going to be a lot more, um, a lot more impressive. But we, the cherry blossom tunnels are, you could find a good one. And they're almost always in the, in the uh, countryside. It is amazing. Go in the morning, like at 5.30 in the morning, 6 o'clock when the sun just comes up. You're probably easy to do because you have jet lag. And you have it all to yourself to get some really impressive pictures, but you're never going to get that in Tokyo because there's just too many people. Oh, look, you got... There's some uh, tour boats that are starting to, starting to work around too. There, there are domestic Japanese tourists coming to Tokyo as well. But it's kind of cool to take one of these boat tours of the Sumida River. I highly recommend it. If you're not taking a space boat, Get on one of these tour boats and, and take a look at the canals of Japan because uh, of Tokyo because it's very much like Amsterdam in a way. Amsterdam, of course, much more beautiful with the canals, but 
it's kind of neat because there's a lot of history and during the Edo period they used these canals to for commerce and transport the Kanda River which is it was the Yamanote line of Tokyo a hundred and some years ago and there it goes he's doing a mating call you better watch out you're gonna get some of the crows coming after you you guys know where you're mating this is fertile ground for Toby and his band of misfits or thugs I should say I don't have any why are you coming to me I'm, I'm do I look like I have food If you do come here, see if you can find these two. Love birds making out. Oh, this tree's getting taken over. Boy, they're not going to be there in a few days because the bees start coming in with the uh, to, to eat the blossoms or pollinate the blossoms or stick their hiney, hiney in the blossoms or whatever the bees do. I'm not going to attack the birds. What am I, 12? Yoda Jedi Zero One. It's easy prey. <laughs> what? Boy, a lot of these uh, apartment buildings, they were here in the, uh, I guess it was the late 80s. This is called River City 21. It was a very expensive at the time, so there's a lot of older celebrities that are in the neighborhood. Sometimes you'll see somebody that you saw on TV in the supermarket there that's retired now and living in their condo um, in this area. So the, the condo is a little bit older. They've gone down in value. The one thing you never want to buy in Tokyo is a condominium. The moment you buy it, the price goes down. I don't, I don't know too many people that, that build houses in Japan and, and do it as an investment. It's usually... Um, the ground is worth something and the, the house is worth nothing. It's pretty much a famous expression in Japan. And there you go, everybody. You are here live with me, enjoying the cherry blossoms. Um, I'm going to see if I can do another live stream uh, today, tonight, or tomorrow. Um, tomorrow, Kanai, Leo, and I are going to be making our way out to see a friend of ours um, in the Tsukuba area in Ibaraki for half a day. So I'll probably take you with me, share a little bit of... of quote unquote the countryside it's sort of like a suburb of Tokyo but we'll, we'll take you around and um, the next uh, next week or so probably uh, chillaxing a little bit I will see my friend Greg again uh, maybe we'll talk about a, t a subject that's in my mind and there's a couple of news articles that, that uh, maybe you should know about with regards to Tokyo there's uh, there's stuff going around that I think uh, you should know and that's what is really great about this channel it's an experimental channel that's live and always fun to bring you along with me on a trip uh, that I do. There's a, a couple other new Only in Japan videos. I'm going to try to get content out way more regularly. That Manjito one was really dragging me down. That was a hard one. But it's here and I hope that you guys can enjoy it too. Um, I'll, I'll bring you around for the next couple of uh, days, uh, the next week as these things uh, blossom and uh, I might even make a trip to <laughs> I might even make a trip to one of my favorite places in Aomori. Um, what is that town called? Why is it? I can't even think of it in my mind. But that's that's where I saw the uh, motorcycle. They have maybe the most fun um, I had was at that festival. Hirosaki. Why, do, why couldn't I get that? Why was that not in my mind? Hirosaki's cherry blossoms are incredible. And I'll see if I can get... Let me see if I can bring that in. I'm pretty sure I took took video of it. But they were... Um, that's where the... Oh, here it is. I saw this guy. And he was in uh, inside of a barrel. And he was going around and round. And they took my money. I put up a thousand yen there. And he rode around and he grabbed the cash from my hands. Look at that. Look at that dude. This is the coolest thing that I've maybe have seen in Japan. It's like, I've seen a lot of stuff, but for some reason, this thing, it's still in my mind. And I want to see if he's still there. So I want to go to Hirosaki just to see if I meet this dude. Look at that, look at that, you see that? You see that? You see that? 
Like, I was freaking out. Like, oh my God, that was the greatest thousand yen investment. Look at there are other people doing it. I should have did 10,000 yen. This is in Hirosaki, and that's around uh, the uh, more the middle to end of uh, end of uh, April. And I'll see if Leo and Kanai want to go. We'll get, take the Shinkansen up there. Man, that's they have a haunted house as well. I think it'll freak out Leo. Oh my God! But the uh, the dude that does the motorcycle dude is the he's just so cool. Man, that was the greatest. That was I was like hesitant to go in there, and I regret being hesitant. I should have ran in there. Can't wait to go back and see the motorcycle dude. Hope he's there. All right, see you guys tomorrow, or a little bit later, maybe later today, because it's so nice out. I might uh, eat lunch and come back out. Great for those in Hawaii, those on the east coast of the U.S. Maybe not. <laughs> so we'll see you later. Hey, Dan is here. I'm in Asakusa right now. Just arrived three days ago. We are going on a cherry blossom tour on Wednesday. Appreciate all your work. Oh, that's gonna be perfect. I'll see if I can do a meetup as well this week. Maybe that's a good idea. We can do a meetup and see if we can get some people out, and that'd be great to meet some of you that are he here in Tokyo. Uh, I haven't done a meetup in ages, but Dan, welcome to Japan, and I'm glad that you're here. Perfect timing, and I, I do hope I get a chance to see you maybe. And if not now, you'll be back in September. Matane. Bye, Senor, who just came here. <laughs>